Well, that was very unexpected from Bon. I figured the whole reason why Bon was upset with Rin in the first place was thanks to how Rin was, you know, the son of Satan, and, you know, he's kind of indirectly connected to the Blue Knight, which caused a lot of death and, you know, conflict between a lot of people a long time ago. I thought that was why Bon was upset, and, I mean, Shima even apparently thought that was what was going on, but... No, apparently the whole reason why Bon was upset in the first place was actually because Rin didn't decide to let them know the truth about his origins and all the things he was going through. He was trying to carry everything by himself on his own shoulders, and he didn't rely on anyone else, and that's kind of why he was pissed off. And in some ways, the way that was used is something I've seen often from other shonen, but it's kind of interesting to see how Bon's character was kind of like that, because I figured he was really upset with Rin because of him being the son of Satan, not because he didn't say anything and didn't say anything that, you know, he's someone that is related to Satan. He has, you know, the blue flames and stuff, and he was upset because he wasn't told. I'm just surprised it was because of that reason is why Bon was upset in the first place. Now, besides that, let's just talk about the situation with Rin's overall inner psyche, what he was going through in this episode, which is probably one of the most fascinating moments of this episode, is when Rin is locked away, he's by himself, and he realizes he's pretty much about to get executed. He's about to be G G'd. And he's thinking in his mind, like, do I need to die? Will I die here? I mean, should I even have been born? Should I have, you know, even been alive? Like, do I have no purpose? Will I die without doing anything or accomplishing anything? He's just thinking to himself throughout the entirety of this moment of the episode. And I'm like, damn, this character is just straight up questioning what is his purpose in life? Does he even have a purpose? And why does he even have a reason to live? Should he even live because of how much, you know, I guess trouble he's causing everyone else? He's constantly questioning himself in that moment. And I'm like, damn, this is a really good scene to see how this character is kind of breaking down and realizing that, like, different things, like, holy shit, am I, you know, someone that really needs to be exterminated? And I love the scene the way he was just trying to question himself. He's questioning what he was as a person and questioning if he should even be here in the first place. It was a great way to see how he feels and what he thinks about his own self which, as we already know a couple episodes back, it was revealed that he still has PTSD, he thinks a lot about his foster father, and then now seeing this right here, it just shows that there's a lot more to Ren's character than meets the eye. There's definitely more going on underneath, you know, his regular character's appearance. Inside his mind, he has a lot of conflict, there's a lot of issues going on, and you clearly see that he's troubled by quite a bit. I mean, even in this episode, when it starts off, to when he's trying to open up the coma sword, he can't open it up because of his own insecurities, and how, like, scared he is of his own self. I mean, let's think about the concept of what this arc has been about. Besides the stuff with the Impure King and all that, and being resurrected and Toto, the main point of this arc is kind of Rin trying to connect back with his friends, his friends that don't trust him as more, the friends that kind of dislike him or hate him now. He's been trying to reconnect with them, trying to make them to where they understand that he's not a bad guy and that, you know, you can trust me. I'm not someone that's going to kill you guys. And throughout this arc, he's been trying to do that. And one of the big things he's been trying to do is trying to overcome his own weakness where he lost control of his flames, he went berserk, and he, you know, almost hurt people, a lot of people. And he realizes that, you know, he needs needs to get this under control, and throughout this arc, he's been trying to learn how to control his flame, so he's seen him trying to master it, and throughout this, when he's trying to release his coma sword to actually get his powers out before he can help everyone out, he is scared, he can't open up the sword, because he is absolutely terrified of his own powers, his own self, and that really goes to show you behind how he shows this face, how he shows like he's all excited and happy, there is more going on here, especially in that scene to when it looks like he everything is fine. When he looks like he's happy, he actually is really scared. He's terrified. He's shaking. And I love the emphasis on when you see the sword just shaking while he realizes what's going on here. He wasn't even aware of it himself that he was absolutely terrified of his own powers. And I'm like, damn, just this characterization and the layers that are being added to Rin's character with this episode to the, you know, inner mind, like his psyche of how he feels about himself and should he really die to the point to where he's actually insecure about his own abilities and realizes that his abilities are very dangerous and he's scared of hurting others. I'm like, holy crap, great episode. Way better than that anime original shit we got in, you know, season one. Like, damn, it's... This is way beyond that shit we got. So yeah, I mean, the episode by far, I think this is one of my personal favorites just because of the characterization Ren is getting in slash development as well. 
So, with all that being pushed aside, let's talk about the main conflict of this episode, which focuses around the Impure King. As we know, the Impure King has been revived in last week's episode. Sugru's on the ground, he's been stabbed, and we know that he's pretty much dead as fuck, which is kind of sad because I thought that, you know, the character could have a big purpose if he lived, but most likely he's going to die. So, the Impure King has been revived. It's constantly expanding and growing its mass, and you have it to where they all need to stop it, and the only one that seems to be really able or capable of stopping this creature would be Rin because of his coma sword and his blue flames but you know a lot of the order as you know don't want Rin around because you know he's caused a lot of trouble they want to execute him and now he's been broken out thanks to all of his friends which has caused a whole lot more conflict because now once everything is said and done that doesn't change the fact that Rin just broke out of jail so everybody else is probably going to get in trouble he's going to get in trouble he might be executed we'll have to see where that goes but they might let him slide if he does kill the Impure King, which I'm going to assume that's what's going to happen. He's going to kill the Impure King, or something's going to happen to the Impure King, and he's not going to be executed on the spot. They'll give him another chance because he was able to help out everyone, and they're like, okay, he's not that bad of a dude. We can give him one more chance. He doesn't need to be executed because he helped out against the Impure King, and he was one of the main people that were actually able to stop it in the first place. Besides that, however, most of the episode was pretty short and simple. I mean, we already kind of knew everything else that was going on this episode. When Mamushi, she's uh, hurt, and she needs medical treatment to, you know, what's going on with Sugro and apparently how he's fighting, even though he know he's down on the ground. And the main point of this episode was just Rin and his conflicts as a character, and that's about it. That's all this, you know, episode really tried to show and its purpose was, and also all the characters kind of, you know, accepting Rin for who he is, and they're finally back together and as good friends. Oh yeah, one last thing though, Shima, you're, you're kind of an ass. Like, Shima, what you did in this episode, like, you're a quality friend. Like, you, you didn't want to help out and all that. The way you acted, just, like, quality right there. Quality fucking friend. But uh, enough with that. You all have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.